Welcome back to another video, y'all. Front Range Guide Service, Owen Lochner, Colton Caldwell. We're going to be starting a calling series throughout the summer. And in this first series, we're gonna be doing how to goose call lessers, which not only for us here in Colorado, but it applies to many other people across the US. And we're gonna be starting with lesser goose calling. And why do we like hunting lessers, Owen? Man, November is a fun time of year here in Colorado. There's lots of calling, lots of shooting. A lot of fun time, a lot of laughs. It's just, you can't beat it. I mean, the way these little geese interact and how they respond to the calling and big decoy spreads. I mean, it's, it's a fun time. November comes around, you better watch out. So the first part of that is knowing what little geese sound like in a field. And now these aren't cacklers and specifically like we have on the West Coast, even though we do shoot a handful of cacklers here throughout the season, these are gonna be lessers again. They're a subspecies of Canada geese, one of the many that we get here in Colorado. But, and specifically we're focusing on their vocabulary lessers, which includes notes. They're not a very diverse Canada goose. They kind of make a high pitch cluck like mm -hmm. a big goose would make too as well. But again, just gonna be more high pitch. They don't have the moaning sounds that you would hear or necessarily the long moaning sounds that you would hear from a big Canada goose. But it's a short vocabulary, lots of clucks, really fast. So we're gonna get right into what a cluck sounds like and how to do it. Yeah, so you just got your new goose call and kind of the one thing you wanna look for in a, in a lesser goose call is you're looking for something short, something to come back, something that can run with a lot of speed and a lot of high sounding notes. You're not really looking for those long, big board goose calls that's gonna give you your deep, goosey sounds. You want something short, something you can get a lot of air through, it's pushing out, it's fast, and it's really high pitched. Um, for me, um, I'm running a power calls ion this season, and then Colton has a 206 from Pacific Calls. This, these are their lesser calls, and it's something that we're gonna be running in the pit a lot this upcoming goose season. So the first thing that we're gonna start off with is going to be the simple cluck. And now for me personally, I'm gonna say into the call, gert The G is gonna be building that back pressure. The T is gonna be hitting the top of the roof of my mouth just to flip that read over in a quick, fast pace. And now for Owen, what do you say into the call, Owen? I say hut. So same thing with the T is that's that your tongue snapping to close off the note at the top. So gert, hut. Everybody just has different way of presenting their air and kind of back pressure. Everybody's different. So those are kind of two ways that you can kind of more so focus on your air pressure. But in all sense, it's all coming from the diaphragm though. So it's all hot air with clucks, whether it's gert or hut, you can say that emphasis on top with the T is that's going to make you stop that note, which gives you that call to break over where you get that clucking sound. So in the back of the call for me saying gert again, it's just going to sound like <laughs> and for Owen saying hut in the back of the call sounds like <laughs> and now flipping this call over and then blowing it in order to sound like a lesser goose for me again, it's going to be a different tone than Owen. They're all correct because all geese have different tones, but this is what's going to sound like. Bah, 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 bah. And for Owen, it sounds like. Bah, 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 bah. You will hear that his is actually going to be more high pitched, which can be based upon the diaphragm, how much air he's pushing into that call, or it can be based upon the call itself. But those two specific tones are both correct in order to call lessers and it diversifies yourself between two people or if you're gonna be hunting more people with more people in the pit. Yeah, definitely. The key here is diversity in the pit or in the blind. You wanna make sure that you guys aren't just trying to mimic each other, because at the same, you're trying to sound like a live flock of geese. So you wanna sound like as many geese as you can. So when goose calling for lessers, one thing that you're gonna hear us talking about is calling a lot and calling fast. But don't think that just cause you can do only a single cluck that that's not effective in the goose pit. No. Any noise, any sound is gonna be effective for lessers. Obviously the more the merrier, the more people you have calling the better. You're sounding like different tones of geese. So if you can't call super fast, just know that you are a big contributor in the calling process just by doing a single cluck. Just that, gert, gert, gert and that repetitive note. Yep, it's just it's just one of those things, the only way you can get better at it is practice, and there's no other better practice than going out and hunting some lesser geese. So Colton, what he's gonna do is he's gonna run through his cadence so you can hear kind of an advanced cadence, 
and just him by himself. And then I'm gonna add just some simple clucks in there, three different tones. And you can kind of see just how much depth that brings to the calling and your blind and how much more of a live flock you can sound like. So Colin's gonna go ahead and just show you that more advanced calling. And then I'm gonna show you kind of how I can contribute it just by doing simple clucks. <laughs> And now with Owen being in that process, obviously I have the same tones in most of my calls, even though I'm just changing that back pressure and trying to sound like multiple geese. Now Owen's gonna add in and you'll see how diversified this will sound. <laughs> and you'll see how much more or how much better that sounds with multiple people calling versus just me calling by myself. So now we're gonna kinda of get into the more advanced techniques and the calling lessers. And really the only advanced thing about it is just your speed, your cadence. And what I mean by cadence is you're adding double clucks, you're adding triple clucks, various tones in there mixed in the one. And that's just gonna be more of your advanced sound to calling lessers instead of just single clucks. So most people think with the double cluck, it's two clucks back to back sounding like this. And that's wrong. What you want to do is you want to have two breaths into one note, essentially. So instead of hut hut, it's ha hut, ha hut. And that's going to give you that double cluck sound instead of just two clucks. And again, you're building up the back pressure and then using your tongue to hit the roof of your mouth to flip that reed over twice back to back with the same back pressure. So Owen's going to show you what it sounds like in the back of his call and then in the front of his call so you can get an idea and try and train for yourself. Yep, so it's gonna sound like this. Not the two clucks back to back that sound like this. It's one note with two breaths. You're just pushing that extra breath over and bringing your tongue to the top of the roof of your mouth to be able to break that call over and finish the double cluck. So here's what it sounds like in the front of the call, slow. It doesn't sound like two clucks. It's one note, two breaths. And then as you get confidence and you get speed and you kind of get that rhythm and that feel for your back pressure and how you're presenting your air fast, it's gonna sound like this. So you're getting confidence on that double cluck now. You have your single clucks. Colin's gonna demonstrate kind of adding that into your cadence with single clucks and double clucks, how much that just expands your vocabulary and the way you sound into the call. And now again with your cadence, it's just gonna be trying to make like different tones to sound like different geese, and that will expand what it sounds like for geese in the field. So it's gonna sound something like this. I usually typically start with my single honk, to create back pressure and then start getting and rolling my tongue into that cadence to build it up. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, so you can just see just by adding those double clucks into your cadence, how more advanced that sounds just by one person. And then now, if you have two people in the pit or into the blind calling or however many you can fit in there, this is kind of what it sounds like with two people with more of those advanced notes with the double cluck. And I'll have, oh, go ahead. So typically, calling together, you want to have somebody that's leading and somebody that's following so you can feed off of each other and sound like multiple geese in the field. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to sound something like this. I'll lead. <laughs> So again, you're calling as fast as you possibly can to create the attention or create the attraction that you're just a bunch of geese feeding actively in the field. So adding to your advanced vocabulary with calling lessers, you're gonna then add kind of the final stage of clucking and that's your triple cluck. And this is probably one of the hardest notes to hit when you're clucking. And that's just because it's three pushes of air for one note. So you have one push for a cluck, 
two pushes for a double claw, and then three pushes for a triple claw. Now, it's not consecutive double clucks or consecutive clucks, it's still one note with just three breaths. So, in a sense, it's ha ha hut, ha ha hut. Instead of ha hut or hut, you're just adding another ha. So, on the back of the call, this is what it's going to sound like. And then the most important thing with more of these advanced notes is to start slow and then work your speed up as you gain confidence in kind of that muscle memory of where your tongue placement and your air pressure needs to be. So kind of this is what it sounds like starting slow and then building your way up. And that's perfect and all you need to know for the triple clock. Now to get into one more note that's not necessarily the triple clock, but will add some advanced notes to your cadence is just gonna be the murmur -mur or the huh that a lesser candle goose will make. So again, a lesser candle goose is not very advanced in notes, so it's not making a moaning tone that you would hear from a big goose, but it's just gonna be <laughs> You'll hear them do this a lot of times when they're flying in the air, or if they just land and hit the ground, and they're looking around getting ready to actively feed. So you can start by clucking or doing some double clucks and then just throwing that in there. And it'll sound something just like this. <laughs> and that would just imitate a two geese answering back and forth, but then you can throw it into your cadence to sound like more geese in the field. So now that we got all of our clucks and tones down, we're gonna get into what is the most important thing when goose calling in the field, and that is reading the geese. So when reading the geese, you typically wanna start with a high pitch cluck noise, and this is to get their attention. We typically are trafficking geese here on the front range of Colorado, yep. and in order to catch their attention, you just wanna show them, hey, this is where we're at, we're here, there's geese actively feeding in this field. And then you're gonna lead into your double clucks and triple clucks, getting the geese excited as they're coming towards you to make them commit, hopefully on that first pass. And then you're gonna finish the geese and get them right where you want them. And that'll be, again, back into double clucks, maybe cluck moans, stuff like that. So this is what it's gonna sound like, and this is what it looks like for me and Owen when we're goose hunting in the field. Perfect, let's do it. <laughs> that's putting the geese right where you want them based upon your decoys but that's how you're going to get their attention call them get them excited hopefully make them commit on that very first pass and then finish them it's obviously going to depend upon the day the conditions your weather based upon whether you want to call a lot very little sometimes singular clocks work but that's the importance of reading geese yeah and as you can tell these lessers fire us up i mean we love running fast calls lots of shooting big volleys that's kind of the game we play here in colorado so as you can tell, yes, it's fast. Yes, there's a lot of notes, but reading the geese is the most important thing you can do. You wanna keep your eyes on those things at all times. Plenty of times when we're in the pit, Colton will make a note, I'll make a note, and maybe we see that one goose in the back kind of just drop a bit. and be like, oh, I kinda like that. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for those tips, touching, all that stuff. Those are kind of like your cues. And, you know, if, they, if you hit a note and they like it, hit that note again. That's just the importance of reading geese. And there's a lot of guys here that they may not be the fastest. They may not have those advanced notes. But when they make a note and it's a note that they're trying to make for a specific reason and they read the geese and how they react to that, that's just going to make you a more effective hunter in the field. So that's basically it for today's calling video of lessers. Leave a comment if you think there's something that we didn't touch on or something you want us to touch on more or something you want us to do in the future. We love doing this calling video. We want to start this calling series. Let us know what you guys want to see. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Practice your calling. <laughs> <laughs> I like it.